It's midnight and today's adventure is tailor-made for me. You might have noticed that all of my videos are either late afternoon, sunset, or evening, or a combination of all three. That's because I'm a night owl. <laughs> well, today at 5 p.m., the Orange County... Mu Orange County... <laughs> Jeez, I'm so excited. <laughs> Today at 5 p.m., the Orange County Museum of Contemporary Art opened, and as part of their opening celebration, they are open for a solid 24 hours. There were huge lines this morning, and something else you may not know about me, I am not crazy about crowds, so I decided to wait until midnight to head down there. It's in Costa Mesa, about 45 minutes from me, so I'll get there a little before one parking. I should get at the museum at around 1 a.m., and then I am planning to spend all night there. So, let's get on the road. It's about a 45 minute drive in the middle of the night. If you're planning to go during the day, allow at least an hour and a half to get to Costa Mesa from LA. The new permanent home of the museum is in the Segerstrom Center for the Arts campus at 3333 Avenue of the Arts. <laughs> I am not the only person who had this brilliant idea of coming in the middle of the night. It is 1 a.m. and look at the line. There are so many people here. <laughs> Might as well get to it. I keep calling it the Orange County Museum of Contemporary Art, but it's the Orange County Museum of Art, or ACMA. Sanford Biggers was commissioned to create that large sculpture on the roof. We'll see a close-up later on. This sculpture, called Connector, was installed in 2006. It was commissioned by the Segerstroms to be a focal point to tie the existing Segerstrom Opera House to the Segerstrom Concert Hall that was nearing completion at the time. And it's the perfect complement to also tie the newly opened museum to the campus. So it is 2.15 in the morning and I just got inside, so let's see what this museum has. This hallway is an homage to minimalist landscape designer Peter Walker, who has designed the landscape at the Segerstrom campus since its inception in the 1980s. It leads to this hallway. If you look up, you see the feet of the people passing overhead. Pretty artsy, huh? If you look down, you see the lobby. This room is exhibiting the glass artwork of Fred Eversley through January 2023. People had a blast with this exhibit. It's not just the glass pieces, but how they interact with light, with the other artwork, and how the people interacted with these pieces. All night, couples would be on either side of the glass. A lot of people were enamored with this purple surfboard taking pictures through it. Look at the light on this blue disc. It gives the artwork an additional dimension. And this unusual shape is on a mirror. When you look at it in the mirror, you see that it's a heart. Here's another piece where the mirror is an important component of the art. This room also has a couple of places where you can look down onto the main art gallery below. That's where we're going next. This downstairs area is uh, a number of open rooms. The entire feel is um, you know, like a warehouse. There's concrete floor, white walls, a lot of different art on the walls, and then the partitions so that you go from room to room and see like style to style. So 
very, very cool layout. They also had a number of very interesting sculptures in the rooms. Take a look at the crowd behind this giant loom. They're looking at a cube. It looks deceptively simple, doesn't it? It's called Inkbox by Charles Ray, but the top is open and filled with 200 gallons of black viscous printer's ink. You can see the ink as it makes its way down the side of the cube. Here's another sculpture that's deceptively simple, a school eraser. To me, this was reminiscent of husband-wife team Koja Van Bruggen and Klaus Oldenburg. They are known for their large-scale, realistic sculptures like the Binoculars Building in LA or Cupid Span in San Francisco. But this eraser by Via Selmans is from 1967. Van Bruggen didn't even meet Oldenburg until four years later in 1971. Still, it's been suggested that Selman's was influenced by Oldenburg's sculptures from the early 60s. Somewhere in here they are having tarot card readings, so I think I'm going to go see if I can find that and get my tarot cards read. This is the line for the tarot card readings. <laughs> it goes all the way back through this hallway in the door and then it goes down this other hallway. I don't need tarot cards to tell me that my future is not standing in this line. All right, this rooftop patio is pretty amazing. Just take a look at how much space there is out here. On this side is the cafe, which they had open for dancing, but no food for tonight, darn it. You have these fabulous steps that you could come out and sit on and on a nice cool evening like this you don't even need a jacket it's just gorgeous outside this huge outdoor sculpture is called of many waters by artist sanford biggers biggers was commissioned by acma for this opening when i was in louisville on vacation in may i went to the speed art museum they were featuring an exhibit by Biggers called Code Switch. The genesis of that exhibit was the unproven theory that quilts had encoded instructions for slaves traveling across the Underground Railroad. That was the first time I had heard of him, but he is such a talented artist. I love the geometric design of the building and the way that the walkways between the sections are semi-transparent so you can see people's feet as they're walking over them. You can look above, you can look below, and uh, so you can see some of the other exhibits from where you're standing. Or just people watch. It's 4 a.m. and there is still a lot of people here. I quickly realized that this was the line for the coffee. No wonder there were so many people clustered here. It's 4.30, time for a coffee. The coffee line wrapped around the gift shop and although the gift shop was closed, they had a lot of cool stuff. After my coffee, I went outside to take a look around and look what I found. I love art that's got a lot of layers to it. This is a piece that's outside and at first it looks like columns with uh, wire connecting them but when you come inside you can see that there are signs of the zodiac on them there are 12 of them so it's an intermix of our uh, normal zodiac like Aries Taurus Gemini and the Chinese zodiac the lines represent how we are all interconnected so this is just a really cool interesting piece of art all right, it's 5.30 and I am going to head home. This was so much fun. I hope this helps you find your adventure. If you're interested in seeing more museums, here's one to check out. 